Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Speaking Spurs and me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham on a day when we're supposed to be smashing Arsenal in the North London derby and we don't get the chance because the game was postponed due to COVID. Um, so-called COVID. Obviously, we know they've got players at the African Cup of Nations. They've also got injuries. They've got the suspension of Granit Xhaka and, yeah, supposedly COVID within the club, although I don't think it's many. The stupidest thing is the fact that they're under 23 games uh, 23 game is still going ahead when they could have promoted some of those players to the first team and you know moaning about players being away at the African Cup of Nations that's not our problem at the end of the day the only reason you were able to sign them is because they are likely to play regular international football that is part of the whole work permit situation so well done there Arsenal um you know, it's annoying the game hasn't been played because it's a good time to play Arsenal because of a depleted squad. Um, they are severely weakened by these situations. Obviously, we need to start playing some of these game in, games in hand we've got. But I'm going to play devil's advocate. Was it the best time for us to really play the game? Look, we saw what happened um, against Chelsea. Now, I didn't do a video um, about that in the end. So I'll just briefly touch on it now. Um, the Carabao Cup exit, 2-0 down to start within the game. We go into the game, you see that lineup and instantly, well, you know the outcome of the game just from that lineup. It, it kind of signaled the intent. And I think there are a few players he may have rested in preparation for the North London derby, which obviously has now backfired. And if anyone had seen Arteta's interview after their previous game, he kind of hinted at the fact that he might have known um, this game wasn't going to go ahead. However, Arsenal were unfairly uh, hard done by earlier in the season when they had quite a few COVID cases and still ended up playing. Um, the difference was with our situation when we couldn't play, it was because our training ground was closed. You can't train, you shouldn't play. Uh, it's not great for the players. Um, so our situation's a bit stronger on that. However, the Premier League... So, as much as I hate Arsenal, you can't really blame them for doing this. They're in a situation where they're depleted of squad players, although be it some of their own doing, because when you know you've got the African Cup of Nations going on, why sell players or send players out on loan? Makes no sense. If you're going to send players out on loan, make sure you're bringing players in quick enough to cover that fact. Um, so look, it just means we've got more fixture congestion coming up later in the season. Um, the cup game against Chelsea, essentially that squad told us Anto Antonio Conte's... Um, it's, it's almost like he admitted defeat before the game had started. And I understand 2-0 down against Chelsea. All they've got to do is come and park the bus and hit us on the break. Um, but, you know, the second Doherty was named as left back again. It was just going to be a nightmare. Um, you know, I actually thought that we played a lot better than the first game. But as Conte has said, that the level we're at is not matching these other clubs right at the top at the moment. Although you say that, if you have a look at the Premier League table, if we win all of our games in hand, this is very hypothetical here, we win all of our games in hand, Liverpool do not win their games in hand, we actually go second in the league. We go above Chelsea. We sit above these teams that Conte is claiming at the moment we're not at the same level at. Now is that honesty is that mind games I mean I feel a lot of it is honesty I think um, you know we've been quite lucky considering the start of the season we had to be where we are in the table it's very evident that our first team is quite strong but beyond that we're weak we've clearly missed Eric Dyer uh, recently I'd love to say we've missed Romero but he's still bedding himself into the Premier League but when I say was it the right time for Arsenal to play us it might be um, they may have had a depleted squad, but we've actually seen what's happened. Without Dyer sitting in that central role, it's meant Sanchez has had to come inside. And Sanchez has defended much better this season than he has in any previous season for Spurs. But he's not a leader and he's not the man for the central role because he doesn't have the passing ability that Eric Dyer does. So we've missed him drastically. Um, Tanganga has not been great since he's been back in the squad. I don't believe he 100% knew Reggion's situation leading into the, the North London derby. Um, but it seems like that one's fine. But we certainly would have been missing Dyer, Son, um, Bergvine was due to come back. Um, obviously, the situation with Ndombele has not been great. Deli Ali, he can't seem to find a position for him to the point where he played him up front, um, which 
did not work. Uh, he played him up front next to Brian Hill, and that's not a position he can take. So, yeah, Arsenal applied, game postponed. They haven't got the the numbers to fulfil. So it is what it is. We're not playing the game. The Premier League need to sort it out, really. It's, they've put themselves in a situation where it's far too easy for games to be called off. And it's because it goes to a board and it's at their discretion. Now, when you say something's at discretion, well, that's not a, a clear outline of how things are meant to be. So, you know, it is what it is. It's been postponed. But looking at it in a whole, it might be a good thing because it gives us this whole window to get a few players in of some quality to help push us over the line in the Premier League this season, get into that top four. Um, it also means we have players back from injury. So hopefully by the time we play Arsenal, because it is a big game, regardless of where you know they are in the league, their current um, form, the North London derby is, it's just a different kettle of fish really, isn't it? So I think this leaves us in a better position to play them because anything can happen on the day. Um, as for the cup exit, I think had Conte known the Arsenal game was going to be postponed, I think he might have taken a few more risks in that game. Uh, I think the reason we didn't see Sessegnon start was purely because he didn't know Reguilón's situation was going to be 100% for the, the North London derby and Sessegnon is injury prone. So why risk him in a game that we're likely to lose? I, so I, I understand it. It's very negative because I'm of the belief you should put out your strongest team at all times. Um and respect to the opposition you're playing. But I get at the same time, it's a results business and, you know, you have to take these decisions sometime. League position was more important once we were already 2-0 down in the tie. So that finished 3-0 on aggregate out of that. Um, yeah, so this leaves us next Premier League game up against Leicester on Wednesday. That's an away game. Um, probably a good time to play Leicester. They're not having a a terrific season. They've certainly dropped their levels quite a bit. And I don't feel that's been coming for a while. They've been tailing off season by season. Um, so it's a good time to play them. We should have a few more players back. I believe Dyer's fairly close. Bergvine will be back. Romero is training. Reguilón should be back. Um, so yeah, pretty much a, a full squad. Now let's move on to Tangi and Dombele. Um, it is what it is with him. So he has been training on his own over the last few sessions. Um, now, I don't know whether that's come from Conte directly or the hierarchy at the club, but certainly in Conte's last interview where he was talking about Tangi, he alluded to the fact the reason he was left out of the last matchday squad was due to a technical decision. Now, the impression that we've got from that is that it was kind of taken out of his hands and based on the situation with the fans, um, Tangi's attitude, that led to the decision for him not to be there. So I'm wondering if he wasn't urged by the higher ups. Um, I'm I'm assuming Tangi and Dombele would have been in the squad that day. Probably not starting, but definitely on the bench where he might have been able to make some sort of impact. So that situation is a very difficult one right now for everyone at the club. Um but, you know, we'll talk more about that when we hear more news. Now, let's talk about a couple of little transfers. Um, one that's quite disappointing from a Spurs perspective, and a lot of fans are not happy about this. Um, Mark Ande, you know, a guy with so much promise. He's been tearing up the Premier League too. I think it was, what, 12 goals in 14 games. A decent chunk of assists um, has... <sighs> He's kind of at the moment, when we're in a moment where players like Undombele aren't going to play, Deli Alli can't find form, Lo Celso is coming back from injury again, so he's in that process where he's hit and miss. Mark Ande is in great form at the moment. I don't understand why he hasn't had at least some chances from the bench as an attacking option. Um, I think the situation with him going to Blackburn highlights just how hard it is for these youngsters at Premier League clubs now to make it. Tottenham are in a pressure situation where they need to put themselves back in contention for Champions League football. Now, this directly blocks the path of the youngsters because we're so far behind from where we were. It's now hard to go, do you know what? I'm going to give the youth a go and really let them, you know, show us what they can do, which is disappointing. But at the same time, for managers, you understand why they're doing it. And, and this is 
this is the hard thing is fans and, you know, myself, I'm very disappointed at the prospect of him going bright talent. I'm sure they will put clauses in there. There'll be a percentage sell on clause. I'm hoping they put a buyback clause in and there is nothing worse than seeing one of your youngsters go out the door permanently because they need first team football um, and then go on to be a huge success because they could have been a huge success at our club. And we don't have enough in the Premier League that come through, certainly in the the top 10 teams in the Premier League. You might get the odd one. So we've currently got Oliver Skip. Harry Winks was one of the ones before. Tanganga, it looked like it was going to happen. It hasn't quite worked. Um, But this is the... It's it's an annoying situation. I understand why Mark Hande would want to go out the door. His contract uh, was due to be up this summer. Um, And, you know, if if, if a, a team in a lower league is going to offer him first team football on a regular basis where he's not playing Premier League 2 or whatever their under 23s or second team is they're going to take it at the end of the day and it's such a shame because he looked like a a great talent watching the Premier League 2 team Um, and there's been you know we're doing very well in that and that's because we've got people like you know Jack Clark has had to to drop down there to get himself some minutes after he decided for some reason he was going to stay and fight for his place at Spurs. Clearly hasn't worked out because we don't play a system that suits him. Um, But yeah, it's just disappointing that we could be seeing another talented prospect go out the door just because they can't find a way into the first team, just because of the pressure that there is um, to get into that top four. What I would have preferred to see happen is we you know, negotiate a one-year extension on their deal, send them out on loan to the club that want them and give them the option to buy, Um, you know, not an obligation to buy, but an option to buy, one where we can turn it down if we want, but they get first option on the player. That would have been a better situation uh, from my point of view. Uh, There is another one to speak about and it's it's a biggie and that is... Dybala, somebody that we've been linked with several times over the last few seasons. It seems now Conte has apparently given the green light for us to go get him. Paratici is obviously a massive fan. Um, He is a Juventus player. Very, very talented striker. We've spoken about him many times, so I'm not going to go into detail about it. Um, But hopefully more news comes out as time goes on. Um, I think he'd be a fantastic addition. Now let's talk about a disappointing one. So Adama Traore, we've been linked with a lot, very heavily. Looked like it was going to happen. We were in talks. Wolves have now insinuated that there are no official talks taking place whatsoever. So that that would say to me, it's agent, player, club, because you're not allowed to tap up. But, um, you know, you always, before you go chasing after a player, will get some sort of inkling as whether the player would want to join your club or not. Um, but as it stands, and we're being told, there is no official talks between um, Tottenham and Wolves at this moment in time. So that's a bit of a disappointing one to hear, um, especially as we thought <clears throat> that that one was going to be quite close. Which means we're heading further into the January transfer window without making a sign-in, which is very disappointing. We're almost halfway, well, we are, yeah, we're halfway through the window. And no players in, only talks of players out. Um, Just lots and lots of rumours. But I'm sure what it actually is, is the, like we spoke about in the summer, it's the Paratici style of going out there, finding many players, then talking about what they would want contract-wise, how much they're all going to cost, and then try and find the best player to fit the structure that we've got within Spurs. Um, So it could be one where we make a lot of late deals in this window. Um, The only frustration with that is that some of the players we're after could end up going to other clubs. You know, you wait too long, other teams will strike, and you can't sit there and go, oh, you know, should we, shouldn't we? And then you end up not wanting to be rushed into making a bid because you're looking at two or three other options and you end up losing out on that one, then you lose out on the next one. And then we're in a normal Tottenham situation where it goes right down to the wire and we end up, as fans, very disappointed. So that is the situation at Spurs at the moment. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment and I will be coming at you with another video soon. So take care and until next time, come on you Spurs.